everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, today I'm going to be doing a splash painting. Um, this is a thing that I've been working on for the Patreon members. Uh, we started out learning how to sketch the splash so that we could get an idea for values and shapes, um, how moving in different directions, uh, with your strokes gives you the illusion of changing in directions. Uh, so the full sketch um, tutorial is on the Patreon. And this will also be in real time, full length on the Patreon, but uh, for YouTube, for algorithm purposes, and to fit into the train, uh, this is going to be uh, high speed and there will be a voiceover coming but before we get that part started, Satchmo, get down. Um, <laughs> that's Satchmo. The colors I'm using are Liquitex Basics uh, Thalo Green, Thalo Blue, and I have the Artist Loft uh, uh, Soft Body White. And these are mixed one part paint to two parts flow trawl, and that's pretty much it. I didn't need to thin it anymore because I want it to be pretty thick. Um, if you've seen my video on consistency, uh, which will probably be popping up right there um, uh, for the YouTube viewers, that is. Uh, this is about a four on my consistency scale. Let me see if I can get that in the light because it looks kind of dark. Um, it is making a mound on a mound. It is pretty thick. So the idea of what we want is you want thin if you want cells because that thin creates instability. That's what gives you cells. Whether it's Rayleigh-Taylor instability or the hydrophobic effect, if you want stability, you go thicker. And I'm not going for cells. I don't want this to move around uh, after I manipulate it. So we're going with a thicker consistency here. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute. But if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards. Each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all the information that you need, the exact paint brand color, the consistency, the recipe, and of course, how to do it. This is the painting in that video, this box contains a tip for that particular technique. And at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in that particular painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can add to those two colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. Use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluga.net and also at amazon.com. Okay, I am switching to voiceover here. Uh, I'm laying down this base coat. You can see it is much thicker than when I am doing a straight pour. Uh, I feel it's important to get that thickness correct so that it is still workable, uh, but stable. Okay, so now I am just laying in my horizon and I'm going to sketch out the shape of my splash. If you are nervous about doing it with paint, you can just use that skewer and kind of make the um, motions and you'll see the lines in the paint, but it's not um, permanent. Uh, no, it's not permanent anyway. You can see I'm removing some paint there. I didn't like the angle of, uh, of that line, so I changed it. Very, 
very forgiving process. I just like to sketch out the the composition so that it doesn't get out of control. It can, you know, I I have just, you know, winged it previously, and then I wind up with a splash that's a little too big for the canvas or it's a little off center. So doing that sketch is very helpful. I am laying in the highlights in the water now. And then I will come in with the shadows for the water. And you'll see that I kind of uh, go back and forth between the splash and that water. Um, in order to keep it workable um, longer, it's best to kind of go back and forth um, between the different sections of your painting. The more you work it, the more it'll stay workable. Okay, so kind of detailing this sketch a little more, kind of getting my shapes that I want and um, just putting in some lines to give uh, give some shape, laying in the highlights. This whole process is just laying in highlight and shadow, highlight and shadow. And the more you do that, the more um, you'll get a little blending. So you'll get more gradation in those colors. You know, and at first it's not going to look like a whole lot. Um, the, the more you keep bringing in the highlights and the shadows, the more it comes to life. And you'll see I'm, I'm wiping off my tool after, uh, after every swipe there, giving myself a clean tool to work with. Bringing in the skewer for a little more detail in that corner. And again, this is very, very forgiving. I know it looks daunting. Um, if you don't have a lot of experience um, with uh, drawing, I highly recommend starting with a sketch and uh, kind of getting comfortable with it. Um, pencil on paper. It will help you to see where the shadows and the highlights are and it'll make it a lot easier to translate it to your painting. All of the great masters, you know, the da Vinci's, the Michelangelo's, they didn't just go straight to the canvas. They would do studies they would have many, many references that they were drawing from. You know, there might be 10 drawings of, a, of just the hand or a foot um, until they got the composition that they wanted. So practicing on paper is a great idea. It, it will help you immensely, you know, first to just see the shadows and the highlights. Um, it'll make the whole process go faster. So uh, on my Patreon, I do have a video of the sketch of this and how how to see it 
Um, I took a drawing class in college and it changed everything. I used to draw when I was younger, but taking that class really helped me. Um, I stopped drawing in lines and I started drawing um, blocks of color, basically. So whether that's a shadow or a highlight, um, it's, it's just a shape that is a color as opposed to drawing just the lines themselves. And it creates a much more realistic effect. So if you are interested in the full length version of this video, where I talk you through every step along the way, or if you are interested in the sketch video that is on my Patreon. Now I am getting ready to add the little droplets. So I'm visualizing these droplets and so the best way that I've come up with for the droplets is to lay down the highlight And then I will lay down the midtone again in the center of those droplets so that the highlight just shows up on the edges. So here's the midtone. And then I will connect the droplets to the splash. Oh, now I'm, I'm actually bringing in the shadow color. And you'll want your shadows to be uniform. So if your shadows are on the top of the droplet, then it's gonna be on the top of all of the droplets. Your shadows and your light source are going to be coming from the same direction, so or your light source will be coming from the same direction. So your highlights will all be kind of facing the same direction and so will your shadows. So you can see this is a process, right? This is It's shadows and highlights and shadows and highlights and back and forth and back and forth. And the more you do it, the more shadows, the more highlights, the more realistic it's going to become. Okay, so now I'm going to add in this, the little pour. And it's like, oh, I'm not sure about that shape. It's okay. It's still changeable. Again, highlights and shadows. And it takes shape very quickly. And again, this is an impressionist piece, right? So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's abstract. The most important part is just kind of getting your, your shapes right so like at the very top of the splash that lip that's going to be going horizontally and then like the body of that splash is going to be going vertically and then at the base of the splash you're going horizontal again those little details really help to make it look more realistic. 
Okay, so now I'm just adding in some droplets. And it's going to be the same process, the highlight and then the midtone in the center. And then I will bring in the shadow. And I find it best to um, make sure you add enough of that mid-tone so that it really pushes that highlight to the edge. It's just like a tiny little puddle pour. And now I'm bringing in the shadow. And you'll find that some of the colors that you might use might have a tendency to sink. Um, that shadow color uh, was sinking a bit, so I kind of had to keep coming back with it. That is normal. That's going to happen. Again, still adding shadows, more shadows. I'm going to add some of those shadows on that lip. I'm going to define that a bit. And the more you do these, the easier they'll they'll get. The you know, this was not my first. My first one did not look nearly this realistic. I've done several of these, so if your first one does not look like this, do not beat yourself up. It takes practice. If you were learning how to play piano, would you expect to show up to your first lesson and be able to play a Beethoven piece? Of course not. So don't put so much pressure on yourself when it comes to your art. It takes time. It takes practice. And, uh, you know, don't compare yourself to me or to anyone else. Comparison is the thief of joy. We are all on our own journey, on our own pace. We all have different backgrounds. And, uh, you know, we, we all get there when we get there. So, and you, you can't get better if you don't start, basically. You, you have to take that first step. Um, so, you'll never learn how to play a Beethoven piece if you never sit at that piano. So, grab your canvas. Grab your paints. Do not be afraid of messing up. It is a process. Trust the process. Repeat the process. And you will get better at it every time. You know, and if you don't think so, sit down and sketch it out. Give yourself an hour and, and give yourself uh, 10 minutes to try to sketch it and do it six times. Six times in a row, 10 minutes. You hit that 10 minute mark, stop, start the new one. And what you'll find is you will get further and further along each time. You may not finish it in 10 minutes, but by the time you get to that sixth one, you will see a tremendous difference between the first one and the last one.
if you give yourself one hour to try this and you will see it's, you know, we all in fluid art, we love that instant gratification. Um, if you give yourself an hour to practice sketching it, set a timer, 10 minutes. I'm telling you, by the time you get to that last one, you're going to see so much of a difference because you're going to learn from every single one that you do and you're going to get faster. So if you are intimidated to try this on canvas, try it on paper first. And I think we're done. Okay, here it is. As you can see up close, it kind of doesn't look like a whole lot, but why don't you pull out? It definitely gives it a more realistic effect. Um, I definitely could have futzed with this more, um, but I was trying to go gentle on, on my patrons. <laughs> um, again, so uh, patreon.com slash Gina DeLuca for the full length uh real-time tutorial and the sketch tutorial more exclusive content coming up uh also check out the description box below for links to um my paypal tip jar if you feel so inclined uh my website ginadeluca.net where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale uh what else is there? Oh, if you are already a subscriber and you are not getting notifications, please make sure you click that bell uh, and then click all notifications. Um, every now and then I have someone say to me, oh, I'm so glad you're back. And I'm just like, I never actually left. Uh, so, so please do uh, make sure you, you click that bell so that uh, you receive notifications. Only 7% of my subscribers are signed up for notifications. Um, what else, what else is there? I guess, uh, I guess, oh, oh, my affiliate links. Yes, of course. Uh, coupon codes and affiliate links are in the description box below. Anything that you purchase off of those websites using uh, my, Links or coupon codes, I receive a small uh, commission at no additional cost to you. And last but certainly not least, join our Facebook group. Go make some art. Post your masterpieces. Ask some questions. Get your inspiration. Good times had by most. It is the internet after all. And of course, if you... Uh, would like to receive instruction in person. I'll be teaching at Fluid Art Experience in April. Stay tuned for the uh, trailer for that. Like right now. Go make some art. After you, after you watch the trailer. I hope you have a beautiful day.